be on audio, make sure my stuff isn't frozen up. And that was quick. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay, 482, 272. Are you ready? Uh, almost. Give me just a second. Oh. Testing my mute button. Okay, now we're good. Okay, 272. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 272. He... Start over. <laughs> Uh, for the ready? YouTube people, this is what we do live. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. This is episode 272. My name is Hiam. Tom is over there. Now at Discord, Hi. it's like I'm looking here, but clearly the video is going to show you somewhere yeah, else. It's like I'm I'm here and you should be that way i think no yeah. no it's reversed it's that way you're right there we're mirrored and it's obs and everything yeah. else so so yeah we've we haven't been around for a while because for the most part it's just been ransomware after ransomware and after ransomware and there's not really much we can talk about like yeah there was a ransomware attack there was a ransomware attack what can you do well we really we you me a normal person can't really do anything we we've spoken about this on backup and everything backups. else backups that's yes. That's, make your backups and then uh, stretch it out for 30 minutes for an episode and cut it. <laughs> well, so what I like now is they got smarter than that. It's not about the backups. It's about the PII. So if you, if you, yeah, you can use your backups, but we will extort your data. We will exfiltrate your data and then sell it on the black market. That is, I think, what we're getting now. That's what we're seeing and everything else. Um so the ru the rule to that is don't store people's data that you don't need. How about that one? So, or or here's here's the bigger bigger pro tip. Now this one uh, you've heard a lot of security advice, which is hard to follow. Like, hey, make a thirty two character random password for everything. Easier if you have a password manager. But like, there's the ultimate security advice, which is if you want to protect yourself, you want to protect your data, you want to make sure you're not going to get hacked. I'm going to need you to encase all of your electronics into concrete and throw it into the ocean. Easiest way. Don't use the internet. Don't talk to anybody. Don't leave your house. Don't generate any data whatsoever that anyone can use against you. And then you'll be safe. Easy pro tips. Come back here next week for more on security in 30. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's the show. Just if you don't want to get hacked, don't use the internet. And and we and we we've spoken about that. It's that that is partly true to some extent. I mean, if if you're gonna do shady things and you get caught doing shady things, that's one way. But anyway, so there was lots of ransomware. At this point, these are state level actors going after other state level actors. And and if you just wanna what happened is the FBI is now getting involved and the US is saying we will go after you, and twice now. The, the people asked for Bitcoin and they were tracked and they randomly shut down. So that's good, but they just shut down for a week and then they just reopen up shop under a different name and we have the cycle again. So back up your data. That's, I guess, the best thing we can say. And don't use Western Digital's 10-year-old drives to do it. Anyway. Yep. And anyway, our main story tonight is not an ad. I promise you this is not an ad. And if it's an ad, we don't want it to be an ad. We don't want you to buy this, but we want to laugh at it. It's called Freedom Phone. It's for phone, it's for people who enjoy freedom. Now, I love freedom and I think Tom loves freedom too. No, no, I'm I am a diehard communist. I hate everything about freedom. Okay. Well, I like freedom. Let's go with that. I like freedom. However, however, I I don't see the freedom in this phone. So, so I turned Tom on to this, I don't know, last uh, a couple of days ago, but he just looked at this now. So some Bitcoin bro said, I want, I'm, I'm mad at big tech. I'm mad that Google and Apple and I don't know, is, big tech is tracking me. So I'm going to create a phone that has none of that. And I'm going to sell it for $500 and it's going to be free. It's going to be fully uncensored. It's going to be just it's it's freedom encased in i don't know a, a glass screen i don't know freedom wrapped in an american flag <laughs> yes with, with a fireworks 
and a in a in a gun and uh and uh, a hot dog and a ticket so, to a baseball game. So if you're listening to this, I er, hopefully this will still be live when in a few days when you hear this. Just stop what you're doing, go to freedomphone.com and just look. So if you're like what are we being censored from and everything else? It's a phone. It's an Android phone running a custom ROM that, that they've added, they've sideloaded some freedom apps and they got rid of the Google play store. Big question mark because not really. Um, and Tom will explain that, but they don't, Oh, the operating system is called Freedom OS Custom ROM. And they say to trust them. And then when you click on specs, there's no specs. It just says, do you love freedom? I mean, I love freedom, but I want to know how good the camera is. I, I want to be able to show my freedom in the, in the most clear way possible. And I can't do that. Um. I want to store as much freedom as I can. In fact, I want the processor so fast that freedom comes faster to me than it comes to you. And we don't know what those specs are. So, but specs are kind of weighing you down. Don't you want to live your life free from these arbitrary numbers and distinctions? You I mean, just trust that the Freedom Phone is going to be the most freeing because you don't have to worry about all this tech mumbo jumbo anymore. You're just free to enjoy uh, the five hundred dollar device that you're paying for. I mean, there's there's a company that sells a lot of phones that that really hide the specs because they don't want you to be burdened by the specs, but they're not free enough. They, they, they have lots of courage. I, I think, I think this, one of the people said courage as one of their big words. But so they, much courage. So yeah, much, just have... dripping with courage. <laughs> Only if you hold it correctly. Because if you hold it wrong, you don't have enough courage to own that device. Correct. But courage is not freedom. So, so and look, and we're not, we're, we're, we are trying to be funny. But no, this is a serious... There is this is a serious thing that's going on all over Twitter right now. Uh, like we said, a Bitcoin uh, millionaire who claims to be the youngest one paid a whole bunch of billionaire. I mean, I don't know if it was a he may have been a billionaire a week ago. I don't know if he's. Still oh no, part no, of the that trend. was that was that was millionaire in air quotes. Sorry for the oh, the audio uh, listeners. The I, I was going to say I don't know if he's in the Trace Comas Club, but anyway. <laughs> Um, and, it, and, and a whole bunch of right-wing conservative pundits and talking heads uh, were, were chosen as influencers, and they're saying, with blue check marks saying, hey, buy this phone, release yourself from the tyranny of, uh, I don't know, oppression? I don't know if oppression is the right word. They're not being oppressed. And, and come to the freedom side. So, okay, that, if you want to make your phone and you want to say this and that, you better stand behind it in some way. And while we look at this, we don't see literally anything. I mean, somebody wants to know, what's the screen size? There's no screen size. What's the camera? We don't know. We don't know the storage size. We, there are no specs on this phone other than they just use the word freedom a lot. And they go through, it's an uncensorable app store. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Well, hold on, uh, hold on, hold on. It's yeah. not. It's not just the word freedom a lot, though. They have a bunch of of pictures and even even a video of a waving American flag. You're telling me that's not good enough for you for your freedom phone? For five hundred dollars, that's a whole lot of freedom. <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. the The problem that I have is you can't send them cash. That doesn't sound like True. freedom to me. True. And Unless I can pay in unmarked U.S. bills. What's the point? Or, and you can't pay in Bitcoin, which I think is even free, more freedom. Wait, wait. A but, Bitcoin millionaire bro isn't accepting Bitcoin for his uncensorable, untraceable freedom phone made right here in the U.S. of A.? Or, or no, so we're have, led to believe? We have to pay with credit card. It's not very free. So anyway, okay. So now, so so there's an app store. There's 
freedom apps like Parler and Rumbler and Newsmax and OAN and DuckDuckGo. And I, I will say the problem Literally is Literally some of those which have been banned for, you know, threatening to assassinate sitting elected officials. But hey, you know, freedom. Um, the problem is, is that the free the freedom apps that we talk about as legit privacy are being put on this phone and and the the sad part is is this is the the other side of of quote unquote freedom here they're now in the same group signals on this phone is is in the same group as parlor which is completely irrational or not is not right parlor is a social media app that was just uh, perpetuating fake news and QAnon conspiracy theories and and, and also is... was super and probably still is super insecure all the time New, but and, even, and even from like a security posture standpoint there's no sense in having parlor next to signal they are worlds apart but they both promote uncensored thought I guess if that's the right word I guess anyway and then, and then, the, so they they sideload some apps, and then they come up with Freedom OS, which is just a fork of Android, um, presumed, which was done in the open source community, which also doesn't sound like freedom. That that that, I mean, wait, wait, I don't somebody, know. If, somebody made software and then gave it away for free. That sure sounds like communism to me, there, bud. I mean, I don't know if freedom and capitalism are the same in this case. Anyway, and they did that, and then say hello to trust. I don't know what that means. Um, there's a there's a green check mark with a shield, so it's clearly safe. Um, and they want to bring back free speech forever, or uh, bring back free speech forever. Now, I like free speech. Don't get me wrong, but like I said, this is this is really strange. So I don't know. Like I said last week, this came about. It's it went all over Twitter, and then people started thinking about it, and that's the good thing. A lot of people started thinking about it. The problem is, is that the people who thought about it are considered I don't know the the woke left. I guess I guess that's the the word people are using, but it's not the woke left. It's think about what you're buying. You have a phone with no specs. So somebody said, can we find this phone? To me, without looking at it, this looked like a cheap Samsung phone. Um, Samsung's not made in the United States. So if you're free, don't you want to support America and everything else? To not made? Now, it's made in uh, South Korea, which I guess is an ally of the United States and and much more free. But it's not a Samsung phone. Somebody came through and found out it's a and I'm going to butcher this, Umi, Umi DG8 A9 Pro smartphone made in China. So this freedom is made in China. It is presumably a, a no, basically a, a no name. It's not even like Xiaomi or anything super popular. It's basically a no name, generic Chinese smartphone running Android. Okay. And I can't find the exact thing, but somebody on Twitter did a spec of where the chip comes from. Okay. And it's a micro tick chip, basically. And this is what we were talking about. We wanted to bring a hardware expert on, on what to do. And, and the problem is it gets, it gets a little dicey. So what, what you can do is if you want freedom or you want to sell maybe your communist phone, I don't know, or your, your woke left or your, your super conservative phone it's really easy what you do is you go you go you go you go to aliexpress or you uh engage in a manufacturer they sell you these white label phones this umi dg phone okay is 119 120 dollars they're charging you uh 380 dollars for freedom 380 dollars to remove the the communist off of this i don't know didn't didn't they go through a ton of effort to build their own freedom operating system and their own freedom uncensorable app store though like isn't that really what you're paying for it's not necessarily the hardware cost it's all the r d that went into all this work they had to put into the software right well, they're using i think you said freedom o s which you said was just cyanogen mod. Uh, graph which is graphene os so they're building off the free work of others so which i guess is freedom when you steal from others but they were building off the hard work of others who said you know what we don't want we we, we want to share this with the community 
we want to share this and everything else. So we're going to go on that. Now, what they probably did is they probably found some developer and said, Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you sideload these apps? Can you put the American flag defaulted? Can you, can you rebuild this package? Okay. I mean, pay somebody for that. You want some R and D? I don't know, Tom, how much, I mean, if I asked you to do that a couple thousand, I mean, if, if you know the project, you like, if you, if you're aware of lineage OS and how that works and how to build like custom ROM spins on it, maybe a week. If, if you really knew it inside and out and you were a good Android developer, you could probably do all the things that they wanted in a weekend. If that, okay, but yeah, yeah. Make, like a thousand, two thousand bucks. I think is plenty reasonable for uh, like a, a short fee to build a custom Android spin on an open source project without really much added to it. And so what you do is, and I know this from building DEF or from our, my buddies building DEF CON badges is you engage in some in, I mean, PCB way, there is the big company that make, that makes badges. You draw out what you want the badge to look like. And they will cut it. To, they will cut it to your spec. And how many do you want? And they'll ship it to you. Okay. And then you want them to preload with software. You send them the software. They will preload it on. It's not. It's not that expensive. You tell them the bill of materials. So the most expensive thing is this phone. One hundred and twenty dollars for this phone. And then the software. I don't know. Maybe another ten dollars just to add on. And then they'll even do the shipping. I mean, they have a shipping thing, so they'll just ship it from there or they'll ship it to you and then you ship it if you want to say you're you're located in America or wherever, and they'll do that. The only issue is a lithium-ion battery. You can't ship that in an airplane, so it has to come on a boat. But anyway, that's probably why they're waiting till August. But anyway, so you have this, this Freedom phone. Now, the, here is the big problem. Throw away the phone, throw away the software, throw away this. They're claiming that it's not running the Google Play Store. And Tom's going to explain why that's not true. So uh, they, they talk a big game about their, their Freedom Phone app store. And it's uncensorable. And you can't take down anything. Um, and and Freedom, Freedom Phones will never remove an app for any reason. Um, which, as others have pointed out, it's kind of ridiculous, right? Like you, you want to remove obvious things like scams or malware, right? Like at, at the very least, you want to remove malware or things that would be illegal in your jurisdiction, right? Like if you had uh, an application that had illegal content, let's, let's go for not the nuclear option. Let's go for something a little bit more bland, right? If you wanted to remove apps, like if the Pirate Bay release an app, do you want that on your store that is presumably based in the U.S. and against U.S. copyright law? Probably not. Hey, they claim to never censor. Um, here's, here's why uh, that claim is actually true. They don't control the App Store. Um, the Freedom App Store is actually just, there's an open source project that basically acts as a proxy to the Google Play Store. It's not the Google Play Store, it's an open source, uh, basically an open source proxy store. So you go to this open source app, uh, which proxies your request to the Play Store, and you, you pull stuff from the Play Store. The easiest way to figure out how this happens is if you want Gmail, you can't do that through like uh, Samsung's custom app store. You can't get that on any of the alternative app stores, right? Gmail is exclusive to Google's Play Store because it's, it's their product, right? Gmail is Google's. Um, so... When you search on this Freedom Store, uh, yeah, you come up with Gmail, Google Docs, you come up with all of Google's apps that are only in the Play Store because it's, it's just a proxy. But here's, here's the kicker. Like the rest of the software in this project, they didn't like build a proxy, right? They didn't build anything super impressive to get around Google and proxy your traffic through seven different proxies. And uh, no, it's, it's literally just a, a rebranded open source app. Like other people did this hard work. They decided to take it, rename it, call it the Freedom Store, and just use it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it can still be censored. Like, if, if you want an app that Google Play has banned, and it's not preloaded on the phone like all of these other um, questionable apps of questionable content are, uh, and questionable security quality, too, um, yeah, it's, it's still going to get censored. So the Freedom Phone's main promise of being a completely uncensored phone is also... Focus. I mean, maybe they have their own 
way to sideload apps that's simple. So probably what they did is they took off, they unticked the box that says allow you to sideload apps. And we spoke about this with Fortnite. Fortnite told you to click on this and it will install. And we talked about how you should really, you have to trust it because there's no Google Play scanning it to verify it. There's no human interaction, all that other stuff. I'm assuming they're leaving, un, uh, obviously, uh, those sources unchecked. And you're saying it's proxying the store. There's no other open source store. They would have to build their own. So they're using, they're, like you said, they're using the proxy. That proxy also can look at your traffic, right? I mean, technically? It depends on how they've implemented it. If it's just making API requests directly to mm. the Play Store from that app, then maybe. Not necessarily. It doesn't necessarily have to have access to your traffic. If it is running a server backend that you're sending requests to their servers, which are then proxying over to Google servers, uh, yeah, it's a lot easier that way. In, in any case, there's not really a good verification of what they're doing why or how, uh, which is uh, par for the course for this project. Um, what I find really interesting is it's kind of being run like most of the cryptocurrency scams, Ponzi schemes, uh, or essential oil businesses, which is, oh, hey, if you hawk this to other people and get them to buy it, we'll give you up to, asterisk, up to $50. So, like you said, you have all these talking heads and uh, people of... Uh, some people of ill repute trying to sell these things just to get a cut of the pie, uh, even though this is just, uh, it's, it's white label garbage. That's all it is. It's white label rebranded garbage with an American flag behind it. But as we've seen, lots and lots of people will buy things uh, as long as it's got an American flag and the word freedom stamped somewhere on the case. Now, the problem is that like you said, they're they're selling this. They claim that there's uh, warranty support or whatever it is, but there isn't. Um, they're not going to update this every month. They're not going to check for anything else. There's going to be, I mean, is this dead on arrival? I hope so. I mean, we're talking about it because it's funny to rip through it, each part of it. And if you didn't notice it or, or you also were questioning it, we were too. But if somebody buys this, I don't think they're updating the operating system. Um, I don't think they're going to, apps are just, they're going to try and get you to sideload. I, I don't think the parlor app is going to get updated. So whatever security holes there were before, they're, they're still going to be there. It's just, here's a phone at this day and time and nothing else will happen to it. And that's, and that's a problem for a lot of people. That is definitely not in the spirit of at least being secure. It may be free, you're free to do whatever you want, but this is actually going to really hurt you. And the problem is the people are buying these are the people who don't know better. Um, I'm hoping a lot of people who have an iPhone will say, hey, I really don't want to leave my iPhone for this thing. And $500 seems like a lot. So I have a feeling, let's say they buy it, they realize a week into it, that it's completely different than their iPhone, then they go back. I mean, that's. I hope that they, people only lose $500 and nothing else. I bet you yeah. there's crypto mining software on this as well. Oh, um, yeah, they'd, they'd be dumb if there wasn't some kind of uh, always running scam on these things. The, so the thing, the thing that I'm kind of kind of mad about is, you know, I I try to let me put it this way. I use Linux on the desktop, right? I am clearly rooting for the little guy as opposed to all the giant centralized companies. Right uh, now, that said, yes, I own an iPhone. Um, right. Like I, I, I am yeah. not, I'm not perfect. I am not, uh, Richard Stallman over here curling web pages into Emacs to read them. Right. I'm not, I'm not crazy, but there are certain interesting projects going around to build truly secure, truly verified, truly open source apps where everything from the source Silicon to the software has a, a like source chain that you can look at and identify and be rest assured that this thing yes is going to be built properly and more importantly you know exactly where it's coming from and exactly who had hands on that hardware and software really cool projects like that the freedom phone is not it instead it's positioning itself as yo hey here's this cool indie project that's fighting the man and there's a lot of those out there that are good that are trying right not really usable by everyday folk today but 
the hope is that one day it gets there. One day it gets the polish necessary to to bring this style of device to the masses. Um, this is giving a bad name to all of those efforts, right? It's it's quite literally poisoning the well for people. Um, it's a grift. It's a scam. Just like a lot of other things, without getting too political, a lot of other things in this realm, uh, it's literally just people trying to fool other people to get a buck. Um, now, that said, there's nothing more American than that. So, should it be called the Freedom Phone? Yeah. Maybe it should. Well, look, I mean... They've tried. So Linux has gotten on the desktop through Dell. You can buy a Dell or a Lenovo. Dell's, uh, Dell is an American company with Linux on it. Um, that, that's as free as you're going to get. I did that. Th I did that. I bought yeah. a Dell PC with, with Ubuntu on it. Uh, now, they, they had a bunch of Dell crapware loaded in it because it's Dell. Uh, but hey, I, I supported a little bit. I mean, you went as free as you possibly can be. Because the Linux people... My current laptop is System76. It is an independent manufacturer, right? Now, it, it's just rebranded Chinese hardware, right? Like, it, they, they don't mill their own stuff most of the time. But hey, I, I did the indie thing. Uh, and I, I love this system. It's a great machine. I mean, for what it said, Apple is literally producing their own silicon. I mean, they're not crushing the sand, but they're writing, they're writing everything. I mean, you want to talk about what's more American than Apple writing their own silicon, writing the own code. Yes, they are putting the manufacturers in China. Remember, designed in Cupertino, made in China. Maybe we get them to change that. But I mean, that, that sounds pretty pro-America right there. I mean, the silicon, really everything up the, up the line is made and developed in the United States or by an American company. Um, now, there's another website along the exact same lines, but a little slightly, ever so slightly better. It's just freedomphonesplural.net. Whereas if you give us this type of phone, we will install freedom on your phone. So you buy yourself a Google Pixel 4 and we will we will put Cyanogen Mod on it or whatever, whatever the same thing. They're doing the same thing. At least with that, you're buying a decent phone, like a decent phone. You're sending it to them and they will do it. And I was telling, I was telling Tom that we should offer this service as part of our, in, uh, our security in 30, um, line of products, or we will put freedom, I guess, on your phone. However, There's... the difference is, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I've so basically, so they're, they're doing something like that. And, and and we've spoken about this. You want to be more secure and more private and more free. Stop using apps that track you. Apple has done that by by doing. Get rid of Facebook. Uh, Chrome is tracking you. Go to an alternative browser. Safari, Firefox, um, Brave. If you don't want, you don't. Roll your web tracking. pages into Emacs. Yes. Um, make sure everything is HTTPS. Use DuckDuckGo. Um, use Signal. Don't use Telegram. Never Telegram is never the answer. Uh, I, like there, there are other ways to do this, and you can de-Google, de-Google fi. Use Apple Maps. Use Open Street Maps. Op I mean, use other. Circle your your programs around so you're not constantly using one thing. There are ways to do that. You don't need to buy the Freedom Phone. You can have an Android phone. And and turn off a lot of the things. Like we said, use signal, use this, use that. Don't use Facebook. You can buy you can buy your iPhone and do the same thing. So there are ways to do this to be secure and not to fall for a grift. And just just in case you don't want to go through that effort for a low, low fee of it, we 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 understand here at the N30 network, that there is nothing more American than the USD, than the United States dollar. So for 2,000 freedom units, that is $2,000, you can send either of us your phones and we will guarantee you we're going to install Signal, we'll install Firefox, um, and we'll install OpenStreetMaps or a derivative for 2,000 freedom dollars. We will guarantee you that we will install those apps and ship those phones back to you 
uh, with a minimum of crypto installers and, and crypto miners on it. A minimum. I'm not going to tell you what that minimum is. It's a minimum. So, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's they're pl- this this ad, this whatever is playing on people's fears that big tech is actually watching you. Um, there has been no evidence that big tech is skewed one way or the other. There are crazy people at all tech companies. Um, I've met people on both sides on all the tech companies. It's, I have a feeling more of the younger crowd tends to skew towards these apps and the younger crowd is more skewed towards, I guess the, the, the left, I guess that's what people say. And, but they, they so far have been no evidence to the censorship or any of these, these cases. Are you worried about tracking? Yes, we have that problem. We talk about that a lot on how to reduce tracking, but I mean, parlor being pulled from the app store, Apple didn't say that this was the right answer because they hated some group of people. They were trying to protect you from doing something stupid or having your data. And, and we've seen that you may have not personally seen that, but we've seen that the data get leaked and everything else. So at the very minimum, Apple and Google are doing it. Do you agree? If you don't agree with them, F droid, we, we said F droid, you can sideload apps if you want, but start asking yourself. I mean, are they really out to get me? They're going to lose my business. Why would they be out to get me type thing? So there's there's one thing that that Apple and Google want more than anything else. Money. And if Parler didn't represent a risk to their finances, it would still be in the store. The reason why it got kicked off is because if somebody reads something on Parler, shoots someone, right, commits a felony, and then the victim's family sues Google or Apple for keeping that in the place store when it was clearly against their terms of service, they could lose a whole lot of money in a lawsuit. So they thought the risk was better than, or the risk was greater than the reward, so they got rid of it. It's, it's really simple. Like, the only thing companies care about is dollar bills, right? If they can find a way to make more money, they're going to. Um, and if something represents a risk to that money, they're going to try to alleviate that risk. In this case, it was removing some things from the Play Store to avoid lawsuits. You have to remember that stock people who hold stock in companies are all about the money. They don't want anything else other than making more money. So when you hear how come so-and-so is doing this, this 30% uh, cut on the App Store and the Play Store, how dare they, it's hurting people. If I'm a stockholder and you're telling me that I'm going to lose money, I'm going to sue because that's not what your job is. Your job is to make me money. So people, so remember, people, public companies have to answer to their shareholders and their shareholders like money. They don't like social issues. They like money. So if they're going to lose money, that's a problem. So, and they would have to justify it. So that's, so just remember that. So. They're not going to censor one app because it feels good. They're going to do something. They're, if they're going to make a business decision. I'm just going back to what Cloudflare said. The Daily Stormer was uh, a neo-Nazi site when Charlottesville happened. And uh, Cloudflare said, yes, we don't censor. Uh, we are very pro First Amendment. But I'm, as the CEO, I may lose my job. I, I may get reprimanded, this, that, and the other thing. I'm taking them down because I don't think this should be on our platform and, and acknowledge the fact that what, what he was doing was wrong in the sense that it was anti-freedom and first amendment, but also said, this is for the betterment of the public. And, and they did that so far, no repercussions. I haven't heard too many people complaining about that a Nazi site is offline, but I'm sure there are people, but anyway, the, the risk reward was low enough that they said something like that. Um, we are over time. I will just say we have if you want more of this, more freedom phone, more military grade encryption, join our signal group, find us online, tweet the show at in 30, tweet one of us, find us, we'll throw you in there. It's free. It uses it's free dumb. It, we're all, it's free and it, we're using signal which is clearly all about freedom and we believe in freedom for the most part. Just no politics in there because that's not freedom. It just, it just gets heated and makes everything yeah. messy. 
and it's worldwide. So our politics, we, we actually found out that in our group, conservative means one thing to one group of people and something else to the Europeans. So who knew? So we don't talk politics here. But anyway, that, that's our show. We're, we're over. But anyway, if you like freedom, buy yourself, buy yourself a real phone and learn how to disable location services and tracking and everything else. Do not buy this. That said, everyone, have a good night. If you really, really need to make an impassioned political debate in our Signal group, there is one topic has not come up yet that I would love to entertain. Tabs versus spaces. Let me know what you think. I am a tab person. I don't know if that's the right answer. Anyway, with that said, everyone, we're going to go. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs> See you, everyone. Thirty-four minutes on the freedom phone.